Hey, it's Kate. I hope you're having a great day. Last weekend, I built this, a mini greenhouse, and I absolutely love it. This space is perfect for me. I have all my seedlings in here, and they seem to be very happy. The design is working out really well with some room for improvement. So let me show you how I built this, and I'll explain some of my strategies for DIY projects. This of course all started with an idea. I wanted a dedicated space for seedlings. So I started weighing my options. A full greenhouse would be nice, but you have to commit real square footage to that. And they're very expensive. At the other end of the spectrum are those shelf things with the little plastic tents around them. Realistically, that would meet my needs. It can hold a few trays of seedlings in the spring and I could pack it away for the rest of the year. The only problem is they don't really look like long-term investments. So instead I thought I could just build something that size. It would be strong and then it could last for years. So the process began with sketching out ideas. I made sure the design would work well with regular 10 by 20 seedling trays and the dimensions of clear plastic roofing panels. Once I was happy with my design, I bought some material so I could get started. And the first thing I did was cut the plastic panels, which might seem backwards, but they were the most expensive part and I didn't want to mess them up. I had already laid out how I would cut the panels to minimize waste. So from there, I could make the wooden frames to fit the pre-cut panels. Next, it was time to build those frames. I got some tools out, definitely needed more than those, my notes and some 1x2 lumber. Unfortunately, it's finger jointed, but because it'll be inside the panels away from any weather, I figured it's probably going to be fine. Now this is the moment where the gaps in my planning start to show. I hadn't exactly figured out how the frame would work. I knew mostly how it would be, but not exactly how it would join at the corners. I had thought about it, but I didn't completely figure it out. In this case, I chose to start with a square base for the footprint and then build upwards. I also decided to build just one section first to figure it out. Once I was happy with it, then I would build the other two sections. And then it didn't take long before I found my first mistake. Somehow I had made the base too long in one dimension. So I took one side off and trimmed down the boards, then reassemble and continue. With the uprights reattached, I added another piece across the top and then more decisions. Do I need a diagonal piece from the front to back along the roof line? I decided no. The plastic panel would probably do that job. Now I just had to decide how high the shelf would be to balance the space above and below. Once I had the shelf in, the last framing decision was the shelf for the bottom. It was looking really good and I was happy with the first section. So now I just need to make two more using the first as my template. I decided to do the steps in batches, measuring and cutting first, then assembly. It's way easier when you know what you're doing, which is not how this project started. Generally, I don't fully plan out my builds before I start. For something really simple like my soil sifter, it's easy to plan because it's basically two dimensional. With something more complex, I will spend a lot of time thinking about and planning the project beforehand, but it still doesn't result in a complete plan. With this greenhouse, I was probably thinking about it for three weeks, off and on, and over that time, I was adding thoughts and ideas to my notes that focus around the overall dimensions of the project, but also around the dimensions of the materials. In this case, the plastic panels were expensive and I wanted to use them efficiently. And I also didn't want to have to buy any extra panels because of a mistake. So cost is a factor there. The other thing I try to work out beforehand is some of the complicated parts that might need a fancy solution, or maybe there's a simple solution. 
These ideas could change the overall design of the project, and without a solution ahead of time, the build gets completely stopped when there's a problem you don't have a fix for. With this project, I initially wanted to use the basic wavy corrugated roofing material, but that was going to add a lot of complications. They ranged from sealing the wavy edges from cold nights, extra framing because the material is so soft and flexible, and even extra room to accommodate the backswing at hinge points from the extra thickness added by the wave shape. Anyways, after trying to solve these problems for quite a while, I decided to pivot and just use this double walled paneling that was flat and thin. It solved all of these problems and even though the material is more expensive, it probably saved me money from all the additional fixes I didn't need and eliminating those made it so much simpler to build. So I got all three sections assembled and I'd have to say pre-cutting the plastic panels worked out really well. I did have to make one change which was to cut off a smidge more to eliminate a small gap on the sides. <laughs> I got a lot done yesterday and there's just a little bit more to get it finished. So back to it. So day two or three. Anyways, with the frames assembled, I can shift to installing the panels. I started by spraying out the plastic bits that had got caught inside while cutting. Then I taped them closed. This will keep bugs and rain out and it should also improve the insulating ability of the panels. With the panels prepped, I can install them starting with the end pieces. As soon as I pre-drilled those holes, I knew this was another moment that I should have thought about beforehand because I just got drill chips inside the panels that I had just taped shut. So I peeled back the tape, blew out the debris and taped them shut again. Next was the fronts. I attached them with tape for hinges, which will be fine for now, and they also needed a way to stay closed. So I added some string through the plastic paneling, then some small screws in the frame for the strings to hook onto. I made one setting for fully closed and another setting for partially open. The last big step is getting the roof on. I decided to do the same thing and use the tape as a hinge. I knew immediately this was not going to work long term. The panel kept trying to slip down, but I'm going to go with it for now. One advantage of making things yourself is because you have chosen materials that you can work with, usually anything you've done can be undone, fixed, or changed later. It also means you can customize things for your own needs, like I could set this up to be a house shape or add extra segments. Today, I'm just gonna go with the tape hinges. Hopefully they'll make it through this spring and I can make some upgrades next year. And then the final touch for now is to add a few screws to hold the three segments together. These will be temporary screws that can be removed later, which will allow these pieces to be moved into the crawl space when they're not needed. And at 10 pounds each, that seems very doable. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. I even went through the cost breakdown and it seems very reasonable for something that's gonna last. I have all my seedlings in here and the design is working really well. Every day I have to open it up and there's lots of ventilation options so I can always make sure it doesn't get too hot. Next year, I'll probably make some improvements like hinges and a built-in way to prop the roof open. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.